the weather is so pleasant today i thought why not take a walk while i talk to you instead of just sitting on my desk i need to go to the farm store because i need to grab a couple of things and i'm really excited to show it to you guys it's really cool all of their produce is homegrown before i get there i just wanted to talk to you briefly about everything that goes behind making a video for youtube it comes down to four steps for me just to kind of keep it simple so the first one would be research and scripting obviously before you even create a video on youtube you want to make sure that you have an idea i do maintain a backlog of ideas every year i like to use the tool asana.com and in there i would write every idea that crosses my mind so that if I'm running out of ideas, I can always go in there. Once you have an idea, some ideas require more research than others. So I would spend some time doing some research. And once that's done, I would start scripting. And when I say scripting, it's not really scripting all of the details of everything that needs to be said in a video, but rather just the talking points. I would want to know how I'm going to open the video. I would want to know how I'm going to close it and the important points that I should tackle in between. This way I have the video is kind of organized and I don't have to, to drag the video for hours and hours. I want to make sure that it's short and to the point. Coming up with an idea, researching and scripting would all happen in one go. So for example, today, uh, once I go back home, I'm going to start scripting for a video that will be probably published in the next four days, just because I have enough time the next few days. But usually I would start scripting for a video that will be published a week or two weeks from now. So that's step number one. The second step would be filming. So once I have a rough idea of what needs to be done, I would start filming. It's either a sit down video where I am at home, I have my camera on and I'm filming myself talk or it's videos outside when we are either hiking or traveling or videos like today when I'm just walking and um, I would get all of the filming done in one go. Uh, sometimes if I have all of my scripts ready beforehand, I could even film two up to three videos at a time, depending on how heavy of a topic it is. And that would be step number two. Once filming is wrapped up, I would start post-production editing. <laughs> I'm trying to use all of the professional terms, knowing that I'm not the best video maker anyways. I am just a person who puts videos together, but we're learning. So anyway, so with editing, that would be uh, the third step where I would take all of the videos that were filmed, whether like, for example, if it's sit down videos, I will grab those videos. I will grab all of the B-rolls from previous trips, hiking or traveling. And then during the editing process, I would also pick music for the video. I will do adjustments to audio. I will make adjustments to coloring sometimes. I would even grab stock footage if it's necessary. And usually the editing process, it doesn't happen in one go. Um, I guess it just depends on how long and how complex of a video it is. But like I said, it just depends on how complex the video is and the editing style, how long the video is. Uh, do you want to have any particular storytelling? Uh, but for me personally, I try to keep it as simple as possible uh, because just putting a video out there every week is difficult as is with a full-time job. But I try to keep it as simple as possible. But anyway, so all of that editing process, sometimes it takes days, sometimes weeks. The video that I put together about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, the mini documentary, you guys can watch it up here. It took me a long time, like weeks to, to put together. But anyway, so once the editing is wrapped up, is when the fun begins. I actually take it back. It's not just after editing is when the fun begins. All of these steps, they can be fun in one way or the other. But anyway, so once this video is ready and well edited, I would export a copy and I will leave it aside. And once I'm ready to publish it, not publish it, upload it to YouTube, that's step number four and uploading to youtube is not as straightforward as it seems because you upload the video to youtube but there are other things that should happen uh, you have to make sure that you have a well thought description you have to carefully pick your title you have to carefully pick your uh, keywords you have to put together a thumbnail for your video you have to do all of the optimizations for seo to make sure that uh, your video is optimized for search on YouTube. So there are a lot of tricky things that happen in, in the back because 
you can't just put a video out there on YouTube and expect it to do very well. You have to make sure that people can find it and you want to make sure that it's optimized as much as possible. And then I schedule the video to publish on YouTube and that's when you guys get to see it, watch it, like it, comment. Uh, but to be honest, there are a lot of times where all of these steps happen in one day or two days because many times I would fall behind when it comes to either scripting or filming and sticking to a schedule. So all of them will happen in either one day or two days, which is a lot of work, but we do make it happen. With that being said, let's go to the farm before they close for the day. It's so funny how every time I come to the farm store, there is literally no one in there, especially because it's self-serve. So you literally just grab whatever you need and then you scan, pay on your own, no one is there and you're good to go. And today that I came in with an intention to film, there are some workers trying to fix the fridge because it's not working. There are a million people. So I couldn't really film inside, but I grabbed a couple of things and baby cucumbers as usual. These are the sweetest, the best cucumber that I've ever had in my life. They are so good. delicious i have tried this organic juice before from root bloom juicery i don't know if they are local to arizona but it's really really good and it's all organic the only thing is that it's expensive and i feel like every time when it comes to organic food homegrown or locally grown it tends to be a little pricier which i don't really like but anyway <laughs> i'm gonna get back to scripting and researching for a video that i intend to film tomorrow morning so tomorrow morning First thing in the morning as I wake up, I'm gonna film a video. So I need to make sure that all of the scripting and research is happening right now and is ready to go for the morning. I will also make sure that my batteries are charged and the camera is set up so that once I get up in the morning, I'm ready to roll. Uh, but other than that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, let me know in the comments, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you want me to make more videos of this style, also let me know in the comments. I had so much fun doing this and I would like to, to share more with you guys.